Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Minecraft Survival. Uh, we are of course playing Bedrock Edition and in today's episode we're going to have a closer look at our brand new redstone testing warehouse. But before we go up there uh, I want to do a quick few base updates. Uh, now first of all you see that we are in our kelp farm. Uh, at the minute the kelp farm is completely deactivated. The kelp buffer is completely full, in fact it's full past the buffer mark level. Um, so this has been absolutely completely deactivated, it is manually shut down as well. Um, but we've added a new feature to this which I'm hoping is going to future proof it. Because as many of you have seen probably in other videos for the Java edition, they have a new block which is the composter. Um, so I thought this would be an ideal thing that we can hook this up and get bone meal from. But obviously that is not available to us. Uh, we've just had the uh, 1.9 update which has given us some extra updates for some new blocks which uh, I've actually made use of in the base, the main chamber upstairs. But if we come over here, you'll see here we have a mode selector now for this. So in normal circumstances the automatic system is the dried kelp which as you know from my dried kelp video um, our system is a completely self-sustaining system so it uh, only enables the farm here when there is space in the buffer and as the buffer uh, gets used up as well it passes into a storage room in the dried kelp room after it goes through the super smelter upstairs and once that room is full it uh, sends a signal to shut down the super smelter and when the buffer then refills of course it then shuts down the farm so that we always have a constant supply of roughly 78,000 kelp I think it is in total. The uh, the kelp buffer is quite large it goes all the way down almost to the bottom and as you can see it's completely full and um, so we might as well make some extra use out of this and get some bone meal because at some point I will build the tree farm. Um, but you'll see here there's a switch just so we can flick between the modes and I'll show you what that does upstairs is here a piston goes there so there we go so you'll also hear some music in a moment there or at least some sounds but we'll go up to the top here first of all so yep you can hear that there you can see here this is the back of our super smelter so you know all this because there's been a few episodes on that and this is where the various shutdowns uh, are, are here for the uh, for the kelp farm um, this one here completely deactivated from el from entering no matter what happens it can't actually enter the smelter at the moment um, oop, we're gonna fall off there and then here we have the line for the automatic systems which then just block everything at this hopper. But we've added a whole extra section. Um, let's go to the top and I'll explain very quickly what's going to happen eventually once we get the composter blocks. Um, that switch downstairs powers this piston. Uh, this piston goes under here and the way hoppers work is they always want to go down first. So everything once that's across will come into here and it will pass down here. I put an extra hopper here which is just so that if anything is in here when it's retracted the last couple of items can then pass through. And what we have here is, I don't know if this is actually going to improve efficiency or not when we eventually get the block, but uh, it, it's sort of interesting I suppose. Um, so anyway the items come down here they drop down into here and it's a sort of like um, it was sort of like, like a rain rainfall or waterfall um, sort of idea here because items come in here and they have a chance to go down either channel so items coming out here so the kelp will come down here it'll drop into here and um, it has a chance of going in either side so let's say it goes down here once it comes down here it's going to then have a chance to go break apart again and once it's in this levels it has a chance to break down again and go into its separate ways again and what happens then is these um, chests here are just placeholders the um, composters will eventually go into here uh, once we have that in the bedrock edition and from there the easiest way to get into the storage system is just simply jumping up three levels with this just a quick uh, quick item elevator here uh, using um, observers uh, I've got this here just so I know when the system is activated it makes a little buzz the same with everything else around here makes little no uh, alarm noises all over but once that is passed over here it simply comes into here and then it's in the return system from the smelter and you can hear there the drums in the background there uh, as more items are being taken from the automatic farms uh, and dropped into the system and here we are of course in our super smelter um as i said the items will pass through here uh, we just go through there 
into the main chamber of our base there's a little hopper line that runs underneath here and from the area where it comes from our farms uh, all the systems come into the sorter they all get pushed down into these chests uh, just actually while we're up here uh, new blocks that are available in 1.9 um, I have redone this and I've gotten rid of this block these, these are actually stairs that are upside down because I forgot you can waterlog them so our infinite water source now um, doesn't bulge out because we've got the uh, the stairs so I can get water whenever we want but uh, moving on anyway um, as I said the items will come through there they'll go into the, the um, hopper chain they come down here into these various mechanisms and they come into our sorting system um, now I showed you in the last episode we are in the process of expanding the item sorter uh, on a quite a massive scale uh, there's going to be um, four levels and each level is broken into two halves now I showed you last time the massive chasm that we had built or dug out uh, for it it's not a chasm anymore uh, I've put all the floors in I also moved the uh, the beacon uh, and because of the size of this I made it a, uh, a four uh, the four beacons on the top there um, so we have four levels here we have this massive chasm so we can fly in and out um, of the system so if we just glide down here we'll come down here you know each floor has a different color um, so it's color code so this is the acacia floor and at the minute most of the floors and areas have just got this template in here which is just a cross section of what it's going to be for each item that we're going to store here uh, we can store on this side 40 and this one on 40 and on the other side if we just run around the back here this side holds 19 on either side as well and it still butts right up against our um, slime farm which thankfully is actually working now I thought it was because of all the different mobs that I had around but apparently it was an issue with the uh, the last update of Minecraft for Bedrock they'd stopped the slime farms from working so we've actually got loads of slime um, since we uh, since we've been digging and working around here you see as well we've got the, the hopper chains here because that's all in place um, if I get into all the different um across like all the different sections and this part here is what I've completed so far um, eventually I will put the ceiling in like what we have on the top floor but at the moment until I decide what's going to go in every single space I want quick access so that I can get to this hopper so that I can set what items need to be uh, sorted in that various column um, just hop through here and ooh, missed it <laughs> right, so we just go up the steps here and you can see the completed on the uh, the smaller side which is the same again but I'm not sure what is going to go into each section yet I haven't mapped that out but I have I believe got plenty of gear uh, on the bottom level which is not being used for anything is storage for this area so we have uh, plenty of redstone and all these chests we have uh, plenty of our torches, we've got repeaters, comparators, chests and uh, hoppers. Now I think I may have gone a bit mad because I really should have calculated what we needed first. Uh, to do that one floor here, uh, both sides, uh, and also to take hoppers for some other projects, uh, this is all I used. And we have all of these hoppers. Uh, so one thing we're going to have plenty of space though to store those hoppers um, I thought it was going to take a lot more but I should have really calculated it like what I did on the original one uh, and over here as well one thing to see as well just before we go back there see these white patches up there that uh, mark the um, the entrance to uh, the storage area from above uh, this is um, a map of snow so as you can see I spent a couple of hours uh, making a uh, a big snow square uh, it's uh, 128 by 128 which is the size of the smallest map um, I built it out here in the um, sort of the desert area where I go mining for sand you see over there where that light is that's the portal over there and the little base of operations that I had whilst I was building this uh, this took several hours to build um, and has made these maps. It hasn't made the maps quite as good as what I was hoping for. Uh, I was hoping for them to be like a, a proper void, uh, like what you see on Hermitcraft. But um, never mind, it, 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 it's worked out. It's, it's serving the purpose, I suppose, of what we need. Okay, let's pop that map back on there and we will hop back upstairs. 
to see it's easy just to hop between the different levels to get to what we need uh, but now we are going to actually head on out and we're going to have to take a proper look at what the actual episode is about at our uh, redstone um, testing um, shed so if we hop out of this hole here See, I've spent a little bit of time lighting up more of the area here. There's an awful lot more that's uh, all lit up. I need to fill in some of these dark patches here, though. Um, you'll see there, there is the entrance. Uh, there is like a, a really quite cool effect, actually, from the um, from the maps, because they don't all render in at the, at the right time. So you see here, as we go down, they get drawn in. I was going to put some little flashing lights going up there, but uh, changed my mind. And uh, just uh, left the maps there, just on their own. But uh, anyway, we're heading over here to uh, our extended now uh, redstone testing um, shed. Let's uh, just hop up here on top of the scaffolding. So from up here, you can see our redstone testing warehouse. It has been expanded from the last episode where I uh, showed off our slim, uh, ultra slim chicken farm. Um, we now have an exterior section for doing things outside uh, that are larger. Um, if we just come down here, you can see during the day you get loads of light coming through here and um, you can see some of the different things that we built there uh, it does get awfully close uh, to the uh, the iron farm but uh, I'll show you from above here this is the new section that we have that's um, just an outside bit where I actually built our little uh, rainfall system uh, I tell you what we'll, we'll just while we're here let's uh, just take out this bottom level and I'll show you roughly what it will uh, sort of look like so is that all the hoppers up yep so let's just hop here so, so of course first of all you can see the the layout so everything has a chance of going down either side and it will get split up uh, but in this scenario here we have nowhere else to go so we have a full stack on me of scaffolding so i'll have handy um and if we just give that a brief moment and now all of the items from that top hopper have now come to the bottom. So let's see, we have 10 in there, 10 in there, eight in that one, six in that one, got 11, five, six, and eight. So all the items will get broken up and eventually when we get the, um, the composters, it'll all get divided up. But uh, let's retrieve um, the scaffolding because we're gonna need some of that in a moment. So you'll see here on the outside is very similar to the inside um, for our testing facility. We have two 10 by 10 grids outside. Uh, at least here we can go as high as we want. Um, oh, I still need to pour water on these. Uh, right, I'll come back with some water later on and we'll finish that off. Um, we have here just an array of scaffolding. One, we can cut it down and use it as we need it. But two, we can get it a little bit above our structures. Um, we have just a little workstation here, some storage. And at the bottom is just a little bit of storage and a bed. But from the outside of our warehouse, you see we've gone for the, the dark oak uh, beams all over the place and we have oak walls. Um, we have, what are the gaps on these? The gaps are four and then the fifth one is the, the pillar. Uh, we have like a little border here as well that I put in of the brick and then my favorite, the slabs on the bottom there. And this theme just goes all the way around. The roof was quite complicated. Uh, if we hop up to the top, let's uh, actually, let's just scaffold up. Uh, when I was building this, I had scaffolding everywhere. Uh, but let's just go a little bit higher here and you can see the roof layout. So let's just go forward so we can crouch and get right to the end. Um, so we've got, a, I think it's quite a nice little design here. So we've got uh, the wood that wraps around all of the glass here. Uh, and we've used a combination of slabs. Uh, oh, everything on the top is slabs. There's some steps around the sides of it as well. Uh, and the full blocks. But mostly it was all just the slabs and the slabs have been doubled up. Um, and you'll see here the uh, nothing spawns on here. One for the slab levels and two the is enough light that comes through from these um, sea lanterns that stops anything from spawning up on the top here. And to finish up on the spine of the building, I just raised it up by uh, a couple of blocks uh, at a slightly quicker rate because it comes up quite steady. The uh, the sort of the, the steps going up on the warehouse, um, but I, I really like this design. Uh, it took us uh, quite a little while to to build it and to choose what I was going to do. Let's just retrieve those. But next we'll go on the inside where the uh, the main area of the facility is. 
we just run around here. So you see it's the exact same on the side there. I should say as well, these as well, in case you wanted to build anything like this, these are, again, these are all four uh, with the, the column there on the top. And if I just come out a little bit here, you can see the uh, the sections made up from the slabs along the side. There's some steps in there. Uh, and of course, all the pillars. Uh, these are all double columns as well, so that we get the same effect on the inside, uh, so that it doesn't just look like all blank walls. Um, but here it is. This is the area that we showed off last time. Um, this is the bit here I was talking about where I uh, was testing the upside down stairs for putting the water in and it maintaining itself as an infinite water source. Um, but in here we have like lots of storage and everything, but before we have a look at the walls and everything properly, we're going to tidy up this mess. Uh, because we, we've done this, we've done the uh, ultra slim uh, chicken farms. I'll, I'll pop a link somewhere either on the screen or whatever on earth uh, YouTube is doing this week. Um, and uh, we will uh, we'll clean this up and then we'll have a look at this warehouse in its empty form. We're just part way through uh, tidying up all the mess and you'll see it started to rain outside and uh, it just feels like a proper warehouse in here when you can uh, hear the sound effect of, of chickens screaming and uh, the rain on the roof there. It uh, just makes you feel like a, a proper British warehouse. You know, it's pouring down outside and um, yeah, and you can hear the rain <laughs> uh, rattling on the roof. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, crack on and get the rest of this one all tidied up. Okay, so there we go. That is the warehouse now cleared up, uh, ready for the uh, the next time we want to build something. Um, so let's take a proper look down here now that it's completely emptied out there. Um, so what we've got around the side is we have uh, the stations here for uh, any, any sort of thing that we want to smelt. We have uh, a crafting table, we've got a bed, lots of uh, the shelter boxes, storage. There is at least one of every single colour around the outside of the room in various places. Uh, we have our uh, anvil, uh, we have brewing station, we have water. There is actually a chicken that's stuck in that water over there. It has grown up now. I was just waiting for it to grow up so I could get it. Um, around here as well, we have uh, these little... Uh, the storage cupboards uh, which have chests in them just what they look like they're the sort of thing that you would get in a shed uh, and all these are are um, the, uh, the the spruce uh, trap doors and doors uh, I might have to take these out though because I think it might cause I'm not sure if these doors will cause any issue with the iron farm but I mean iron has been being produced uh, whilst these have been here because these have been here for about two weeks now um, so I might be able to get away with it uh, but uh, just be cautious if you want to build something like that. It's a little bit irritating to build these um, just for getting the doors on. Let's uh, just take these out. Uh, the way I sort of did it was as I come uh, facing the back and then jump. You probably don't even have to jump actually when I think about it. The one thing as well, it's a bit of a pain to get the orientation on the handles right. Oh there, you don't have to jump. Um, but uh, you might have to take them off and on again just to just to get them in the place that you want. But um, going back around here again, we have, everything is mirrored. So in that corner, you've got uh, the little uh, stand there with the crafting bench. And in this corner, we have that. Uh, on the opposite sides there, we have the, the brewing station. Can we get that chicken there? Yes, we can. Uh, oh, we need some food as well, don't we? Uh, this is all the stuff that I've collected. Um, we have had absolutely loads of the cooked chicken uh, because it, it, I've left this here for about two weeks uh, before we cleared it away. And all three of them have been producing loads of chicken whilst we work in the uh, in the, the chasm underneath. Um, 
But uh, anyway, going back to the structure here, uh, plenty of lighting. There is lighting above. There is lighting suspended in the centre along the spine of the warehouse, uh, and the uh, floor as well has one in every single grid. Now, as I mentioned outside, the uh, the grids here are ten by ten. Uh, there are a few different designs of them. One is just a blank uh, 10 by 10. We have a crossed there, 10 by 10, and then we have an extended one. So it's uh, actually, it's, it's a 21 really, this one, if you count the middle. Um, but these grids here are still 10, and this is divided up. So if we wanted to make a longer um, build in here, uh, we can do just by uh, just by having that. And it's all marked up and it's color coded in that same style. Uh, and then of course you've got the color code for this grid here. And as I said, this one here is blank. But uh, then at the back here, um, just to make it look like a nice warehouse, we have a series of bookshelves. Uh, I pop some uh, trap doors here just to make it look like it was like a bookshelf inside of a cabinet. Uh, I did try to put some uh, extra shelving and stuff around it, but uh, it, it's just these little corners here. You can you, you kind of get uh, kind of get those corners 100%. Um, but yeah, just to make it look like you know this is where you know it might have the manual for whatever we're building over here, uh, just in our little world here. But uh, yeah, I, I really like this design here. I'm going to, uh, have I got any rockets still left on me? I've still got 30 left. So let's just uh, fly out, uh, if it'll let me take off. In fact, let's go to our uh, our giant tower for a moment. And we'll look at it from above. I'm just spamming these rockets. I only need like two rockets to get up here. And we've used five. Um, so anyway, you can just see it in the distance there. Let's uh, just have a slow glide down to it. Um, actually, it's dropped down a little bit. There we go. So you can see the structure there in the side there. It, uh, it I think it really fits in nice with the... I, I redid the roof on the... Um, uh, what did you call this iron farm? Uh, I rebuilt the roof and I redid the interior as well. So it sort of matches. Uh, even though we never really go in there at all. But uh, the roof design matches the design here. Uh, for a second there, it almost made it look like a crane. Actually, that might be a good idea. Uh, I wonder if uh, maybe it's in this area here. Uh, to make it look like a proper warehouse, we may build some kind of a crane. Or uh, or maybe down here. Um, we'll, we'll have a look and see what... Uh, See what I can come up with. That, that might make, make this uh, make this look more like a little industrial zone in our base. Uh, yep, there's eggs everywhere as well. Um, so there we go. I haven't uh, got a, uh, a like a block by block tutorial from this because it was also sort of like as I was building it. It probably would have been better if it was a live stream, maybe. Um, for building it and uh, running back and forth to gather up all the resources but uh, hopefully from just having a little look around here you get the impression of, of of what it is and how you would build it yourself i should say as well i dropped uh, dropped it down one level um so that if we're doing anything with water uh the water can't escape out here and knock out all the torches uh, everything would be contained down here in the uh in, in our uh, area here so uh, i hope you enjoyed that it was uh I thought it was going to be a short episode, but the uh, the beginning there, just uh, showing around the updates to our base, took a little bit longer than what I thought, just uh, zooming around everywhere. Um, but yeah, yeah, this, uh, this is a really good warehouse here. Uh, I'm really happy with the uh, with the way it's come out. Um, and hopefully we'll do some more redstone experiments in here, or if not in here, uh, oh, the rain stopped. Uh, outside in our little area here that we have for doing taller structures. Um, so yeah, there we go. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, don't forget to rate, comment, favourite and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.